let's get started with the brake pads or split or today uh, we're going to be doing a brake job Ooh, look at that that looks nice isn't it anyways we're gonna be doing a brake job today not the whole extended brake caliper and rotors and everything we're only going to be doing the rear brake pads for today probably is best way to replace the brake pads and the rotor at the same time but rotor seems fine to me uh, and it's also it's the rears my rear brake pads are pretty much gone so we're gonna be replacing just that once the front brake pads are done I will be replacing both the brake pads and the rotors and maybe calipers I don't know yet we will see subscribe so that you get all the updates oh which by the way for those who have been following the channel knows that I have two vehicles one is this GTI that is sitting right here. I have already jacked up the car. Uh, but for those who have been following the channel will notice that the Tiguan is missing. And yes, I have sold the Tiguan uh, a couple months ago. Will there be something new coming? Yes. What is it going to be? Well, you're going to have to subscribe and uh, you'll find out. All right, anyways, let's get going on the rear brake pads replacement. We're going to start with the left rear. I actually already did the right rear, but we're going to do this one as well to show you guys how it all works out. But first thing I want to mention is you will require a special tool to push the piston back to its original position. If you think about it, when the brake pads is being pushed against your rotors, there's something that is pushing the brake pads. It is the piston and the, on the calipers. Well, as the caliper is pushing the brake pads, it starts extending and extending because your brake pads gets thinner and thinner. The way it works is when you're going to be replacing a new brake pad, the new brake pad is a lot thicker than the worn out ones. You will have to push back the piston inside the caliper. You will require a special tool for that. Um, I did a little bit of research on it and I would like to share this with you guys. You could just buy like, I think there's called a retractor tool or something like that. And it's like seven bucks. However, not all tool will work on a VW car and I will explain. So this is the tool that I rented from a local auto shop. I'm sure you can rent one at your local auto shop as well. Uh, basically you just pay the price of this tool and then uh, when you're done with it, you return it and then with the receipt and they'll give you a full refund, which is pretty nice. But just to get to what I was saying, um, I believe if you look online or the ones that I found, the very, very basic piston re reposition or retractor tool is something like this. And this thing is just when you torque it, when you try and turn it, uh, it just pushes the piston back and that's it. The VW pistons requires something like this at the end and these two little these two little dowels that is pointing out will be onto a fixed point while we're rotating it not only will you be pushing it back you're actually rotating as well then these dowels will be rotating the pistons back as well not just pushing back it'll also rotate at the same time so if you buy the cheapest cheapest tool uh, which is probably going to be something like this it will not work so be careful don't just go out and uh, buy one right out of the gate well anyways there you go that is the explanation of the tool i wanted to share with you guys um let's get on it i'll remove the wheel and uh, let's start replacing some brake pads we're gonna start removing the two bolts securing the caliper one is gonna be at the top one's at the bottom you probably will need two of these wrenches in order to counter hold and remove the bolts. Next is to remove the caliper. You should be able to kind of just slide out like this since you have removed the two bolts. The other crucial thing here is to remember to bring a bungee cord or some sort to kind of hang the caliper because you do not want the caliper to just hang by itself because you might damage the brake lines that are attached to it. The brake pads should now be easily accessible. You should be able to kind of just take them out of the guise right now. All right, so uh, this is the brake pads that I uh, just took off. It's very, 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 very rusty. And you can also see that there's not much line and lining left on both sides, which I'm so glad that I'm doing this job right now. This is more of like 
If I don't do it now, I am definitely screwed on a road kind of a situation. And just to compare, these are brand new brake pads. You can see from the side that uh, there is, or actually this is probably on the top. There's like a, a dent over here. This is so that uh, when you install it, you can actually look from this angle, because there's a hole here in the caliper. You can actually look from this angle going in and you can see that, hey, how much lining I have left. And just for a comparison, uh, I didn't have much left. So we're gonna be installing the new ones. All right, so next step, I'm going to be removing these two parts. I'm not really sure what they're called. They're probably called brake pad holders, I guess. But basically the brake pad is gonna be hold in this, in this position, in these two dents. But uh, I would like to take this opportunity to kind of just take them out, clean them a little bit, and also lube them up a little on the glides over here, where it slides around so that the brake pads can move freely back and forth. All right, so I got these off and I'm gonna be cleaning them. Ooh, look at that sunlight, jeez, woo. I'll let you guys have a peek. Nice, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get this done. Before dark. Okay, so now that these are clean, we're going to be adding some lube on where the pads will be sliding so that it could slide a little bit more smoothly. But also keep in mind, do not apply too much because you do not want any of these grease on your rotors or on your actual pad surface. So all you gotta do is squeeze a little, just a little dab. I don't know if it can, show you better just a little dab there you go like that that's good enough then you can use your brake pads because when you're uh, actually it's going to be this way so when it is I think this way oh we'll figure out later but anyway this notch right here is what's going to be sliding back and forth so you can actually use this right now and just rub around that, spread that grease a little all over the place. There you go. So now, when the brake pads are going to be sliding back and forth, it'll be a lot smoother. We're gonna be doing the same thing on the other side. Ooh, there we go. Just a little dab, a little dab. Use the brake pads to kind of spread them a little, make them smooth. Again, you do not need to go crazy on this. All right, and that's done. So let's uh, install this. Next thing we gotta do, like I mentioned earlier, we need to retract that piston. Just to give you a better view, as you can see, uh, let me see if I can set the camera. Here we go. As you can see, this piston is like pretty much all the way extended out. We need to try and push this piston back in. As you can see inside this piston, there's two notches. Remember I said earlier, there are like two little dowels on the surface of the tool that we're going to be, you know, pushing this in with. Those little two dowels are going to be fitting in here. And as it is pushing back, it will be spinning at the same time. If the tool that you get does not have those two dowels, it will be pushing, but it's not going to be able to rotate this thing. This thing needs to rotate in order to be pushed back. So just keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to go get the tool. 
can see there are these two points which will match with these two. Now, just to give you a better view, you can see where the uh, that pointy end, kind of like the male end meets the female end right there. I can't really point right now because otherwise, oh, let me see, there we go, right there. That is exactly what I'm talking about. So now, let's just uh, turn this thing and retract the piston. Remove the tool and just to give you guys a look, you can see comparing to before, the piston is all the way back now. Uh, the microphone is blocking the light. There we go, that's probably a better view. You can see the piston is all the way back now. We can rewind and compare. Uh, but anyway, that's how you push the piston back. Now, all you gotta do is Put the caliper back on. There you go. If you don't retract the piston, you're not going to be able to put the caliper back on. Here are some fresh new bolts that I got from uh, VW for this job because as per manual, it is it did mention that uh, you need to replace these bolts every time you remove them. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. There you go. Uh, the last part I didn't film, but uh, basically you just need to torque down those two bolts to 35 Newton meters. Uh, from my car, I uh, read the manual, it says 35 Newton meters. Your car may vary, so please go check out the user manual or the service manual of your specific vehicle. But anyway, that's it. That's the job done. It's uh, a lot more easier than I thought. Actually, this is my first time doing a brake job, so it's a lot easier than I thought. It didn't take that long. Um, sun is about to set, but we're still having some daylight, so that's good. But anyways, that's it for the brake pads replacement uh, i'll catch you guys next time make sure you subscribe so that you can keep up to date on what's happening with this car also with an update on my garage of what is coming so uh until then catch you guys next time peace